this is an example of what's known as a megalomorph, which is a big spider. This is the ventral view of a tarantula. Big spider has an abdomen and a structure called the cephalothorax, which you might equate to the chest and the head. This, you might say, is the belly of the beast. You can see from this central portion on the ventral area of the spider, this is where all the legs extend, all eight legs. At the head end, you can see a pair of fangs called chelicera. The fangs in the tarantula group don't pinch from side to side. They just scrunch right down. So they have to pin their prey to the ground with their weight. That's one of the reasons they're big. There is the fang. Within this area here is the mouth. So in this little chamber between the two fangs, the liquefied portion of the meal will enter the body of this tarantula. So they really digest the critter before they take it inside their body. More than 90% of all the other spiders belong to a different group. The group where the fangs pinch rather than crunch like this tarantula. Up here between these forward legs and some of the structures called pedipalps, kind of like feelers, are eight tiny simple eyes on a kind of a bump on the top of the cephalothorax. Here's a close-up of the eight simple eyes on the top of the cephalothorax of this big spider. Spiders don't have compound eyes like insects, so this tarantula might be able to see poorly a foot or so, which is all it takes to keep it from being hungry. Eight simple eyes on the cephalothorax of this tarantula. Structures in the front are the pedipalps. In males, those pedipalps are consistently ornate and they're used for passing sperm to the female. Their respiration is by book lungs. These are slits on the belly that open into a little chamber for oxygen exchange. It's not real efficient, but it seems to work for this tarantula pretty well. One of the limiting factors which makes tarantulas not get even more huge than they are is their inefficient respiratory system. All spiders produce silk. The silk producing glands are in this area. These are the spinnerets on the end of the abdomen. It's through these structures that silk is produced. The silk and tarantulas are used to make a little netting on the ground sometimes to alert the tarantula to food that walks by. They also line their dwellings with the silk that they produce. This spider does not spin a web uh, as we recognize webs with a nice ornate pattern, but they place nets on the ground and they line their burrows with silk. This spider belongs to a large group called the arthropods which means jointed appendage. You can see the little joints in this leg. Uh, muscles inside tug on the chitinous exoskeleton and make movement. One of the eight legs has a single structure. does not have hooks like its cousins, the insects. Insects have hooks on the ends of their appendages. Spiders just have a single structure called uniramus. You can see the hairs all over the abdomen. Tarantula will often take its legs and rub off those hairs. Those hairs become annoying to uh, a dangerous visitor, perhaps. With humans, they get into human eyes and noses and cause grief. So those urticating hairs are really more unpleasant than the fangs. These spiders are very docile. They're not interested in biting you. They're not interested in sinking their fangs in you they recognize you're not a good meal.